Welcome to 60 Skills. And the topic of today's lecture is What Can Spirits Do For You? Part 2, Intelligence Gathering. All right, as was discussed in the last lecture on what spirits can do for you, we talked about how certain spirits or intelligences can be invoked into the body and thereby turning off certain safeties within the body that allow some of the cities or esoteric abilities to develop or more to the point, allowing you as an individual or practitioner to run more energy through your body than you normally would by yourself. All right, that's one in one of the more common applications of working with spirits. The topic of today's lecture, however, is intelligence gathering. Another thing that intelligences, hence the name of calling a spirit an intelligence, can do is they can be an expert in something. In works like Franz Barden's Magical Evocation, his second book, he details hundreds of different spirits with hundreds of different functions, covering, covering everything from metallurgy to leatherworking to herbology to pranayama to fitness to various forms of magic and more. So by making contact with an intelligence that happens to be a specialist in something, you can then gain information or access to information that you would otherwise not have. This is, in general, one of the more low-cost methods of engaging a spirit. We'll get to a higher-cost method of engaging in spirits in our next lecture. Now, in this case, you really only need to contact the spirit at a mental, akashic, or non-dual light level. There's no real need to bring the spirit into your astral or vital bodies. So because of this, the karmic cost of working with the spirit is in fact relatively low. Now, unlike what you will read in some books, for the most part, spirits can only act by reflecting off of your nature. So this is where knowing something about what the spirit deals with becomes very important. And I'll tell a little story about this in a moment. The simple fact of the matter is, regardless of how good your clairvoyance or clairaudience is, in general, you have to have some subject matter knowledge yourself for the spirit to have something to work with. Now, if you have a lot of this kind of innate knowledge from study or practical work or what have you, you can get a lot of information. As a functional matter, most of what you get only gives you about a 10-year leap on state of the art. Now this is in terms of what's actually actionable in your timeline. And the reason for this is very simple. The simple fact of the matter is when you're dealing with inventions or information that's only functional in the general consciousness 20 or more years ahead, the fact of the matter is the things required to make that technology actionable generally do not exist or do not exist in a manner in which you can get your hands on them. For example, microwave ovens. The technology for these had been around since at least the early 1950s. But as a practical matter, these were only used in industrial applications, in large hospitals, in scientific research laboratories. And there were a variety of reasons for this, not the least of which is only those places had access to the kind of regular power supplies necessary in the amount necessary to run an appliance like that. Fast forward to the 1980s, and you could practically give these things away for a couple hundred dollars. Fast forward again to 2022, when this recording is made, you can buy a microwave oven for 50 or 75 US dollars in any store available, maybe even less if you shop around. So the fact of the matter is, even if you'd been shown how to make a microwave oven in 1930, the things you would have needed to make that an actionable technology that you could use simply wouldn't have been available to you. Likewise, the infamous tricorder from the first Star Trek series. This is clearly, amongst other things, a cellular telephone. But as a practical matter, cellular telephones were not widely available in the developed world until the early 1980s. And even then, they were quite expensive. And it wasn't until the 1990s that they were any, in any way affordable. Technology from time periods beyond that tend to fall into the realm of fantasy. 
you can see what it is, you can see what it's going to do, you might even be able to see how to put certain parts of it together, but the things you would need to actually do it with are simply unavailable. So let's talk about an example of this, the need for the spirit to reflect off of knowledge that's already inside a practitioner. I had a close friend, very advanced in spirit magic, an amazing practitioner, very clear clairvoyance, very clear, clear audience. For whatever reason, he wanted to be a master of hydrology. All right, so he went out and found the spirit in charge of hydrology in Franz Barton's second book on evocation, went about the process of making contact with the spirit. He immediately ran into trouble. He had to work through a series of subordinate spirits. It took a full year, very hard to do. It was very clear that this entity basically didn't want to talk to him. So finally, at the end of this, he does make contact with the entity proper, and he's given a vision. He sees a vision of a long open field, lots of young people walking around, series of low buildings in the distance. And then something amazing happened. A scroll is formed in front of him and it unrolls and there are letters on it and he can read the letters. Again, being able to read something in the astral or mental planes like this clearly is very uncommon. Three letters, P H D. What the spirit was trying to tell him was that he simply didn't know enough in his current incarnation for the spirit to have something to work with. So this is where the realm of study comes into intelligence gathering utilizing spirits. So this is also the reason why people who are very good at Qigong or Pranayama or martial arts or whatever tend to get more of that kind of information because that's the kind of information that the spirit can reflect off of. So that's a short little lecture on intelligence gathering and spirits and the reason why it's important to know a lot about something if you're going in search of more information. So if you like today's lecture, please hit the subscribe button down, to, down below and give us a like. And if you'd like to learn more about the 60 skills curriculum, please look at the details included with this video down below. Be well.